Hello everyone. I thought I'd let you know that the um, TV is finished. So, we ended up using um, a bit of epoxy in the corners and then filling the rest up with silicon. Just clear one. Um, everything's wired up, even the Raspberry Pi, which still has a uh, USB full of ROMs on there. And uh, yeah, those connections do work too. Well, yeah, it could have been cut a bit better, but yeah, first time with a dribble, so that's that. And on the top, we got a really shit deep fried meme. Mmm. I can't believe I paid two dollars for that. Oops. Oh, yeah, the other thing too. I can put batteries in it. I have wired up the um, contacts to it, but uh. I just don't really see myself using whatever it was. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't really see myself using eight D sized batteries for this. But I do have the option there, if I must. It probably is more power efficient now that it's just a cheapo Chinese uh, flat panel display. Speakers hooked up, everything works. So, um, yeah, I'm going to plug it in and show it off. Yeah, there we are. Rate my setup. Now, this switch in the middle does absolutely nothing. It's just there. Now, there's uh, an option for radio, off, and TV. Now, the only thing that actually works is TV. And I put a nice little yellow LED there. Um, that way, when you turn off the Raspberry Pi or whatever, um, it'll still show that it's powered on, technically. Yeah, everything works. I got. Just cancel the timer. Okay. Now I got Debian, LibreOLEC, which is just Kodi, and RetroPie on there with um, Berry Boot. So, well, uh, seems to work better than the uh, default multi OS thingy majiggy. Yeah, let's go. Just kind of leaning on the keyboard. Um, let's go Debian. See if we can load something up. There we go. Boot it all up. Let you pick a video. So this one from the Sandy Cat. Doesn't quite fit on the screen, but if you get a full okay. screen, it's fine. You knocked my burn off the windowsill. His line to me isn't half so upsetting as the credit he's giving my intelligence. Uh, what an amazing channel. Yeah, so uh, that's Debian. Um, I'll try to show you what the games are like. So one thing I should mention is there's quite a bit of interference with something. Um, if I turn it right up. It's usually when I move the mouse. It kind of sounds like a dial-up sound. Don't know how to fix it, but turning the volume down makes it pretty much unhearable anyways. So. Well, even when it's completely off, I can still hear a high pitch noise when I move the mouse. Don't know what causes that. I don't really care too much. Alrighty. So this is RetroPie. It's basically where you have all the emulators and stuff. Everyone knows that. My favourite, of course, is uh, MS-DOS. There we go. Isn't that great? This is beyond the capabilities this TV could ever do in the past. So. And it's all in one little compact little thing. Sort of. So, yeah, I'm very happy with the project so far. Um, it's pretty much done as far as I can tell. Although I will need to re-glue this thingy. It's coming off a bit. But, yeah, funnily enough, that never used to glow on the um, original TV, but it's translucent, so I don't see why they didn't make it do that. But, yeah, anyway. So, yeah. Alrighty, I got this in a very awkward spot. But I'll show you what it's like using it as an actual TV. So you basically put it on TV mode. 
Um, there used to be an AV button right here, which there still is. But what I've used it for now is it just mutes the internal audio. So that's all that does. That way, if this is playing a YouTube video or something, and you suddenly want to use the TV, um, just let it do its thing. And uh, let me just turn on the um, PlayStation 2. Yeah. So the cables are not very really good. Hmm. Well, that hasn't happened before. Let me try the white one. Oh shit. There we go, now it's working. Yeah, it can go very loud actually. There we go. So yeah, you can use it as a TV as well. As soon as you unplug the um, video there, it goes back to the um, internal one. Pretty cool. Yeah. Now I would show you internals of the actual what's in there, but this is an absolute nightmare to pull apart and uh, put back in. So I'm only going to show some early pictures of it that I took with my phone as I was building it, but it's not everything that's in there currently. Oh my god, it's nearly done. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So we've got this complex mess here. So this is its internal Raspberry Pi. Um, directly right in. There's a lot of static coming out of this. Daisy chaining it off to another Raspberry Pi to test the back ports. It seems to be working with changing the channel fine. So if I can unplug it. There we go. It goes back to the original one. Well, let me just plug the uh, keyboard into there. I've actually got it in there upside down, so I keep getting confused. Yeah. Okay. And you may notice there's no sound. However, it's only because of a mute button. I thought, if you're going to plug something externally, I don't want the internal one playing any sound, so I'll put a button on there to turn off. And there you go, there's your sound. And the volume wheel works as well. And yeah, it's pretty much done. The only thing that needs to be done now is I need to cut holes out of here for the USB. And then, there we go, put it together. And uh, yeah. Oh yeah, hope you enjoyed watching about this little TV thingy. Um, yeah, don't know what I'll do with it though. 